Hey there, Tiny Woman Badger here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a fursuit head foam base. And I have said that wrong almost every time I've attempted to film this intro. Anyways, I'm not going to be showing you guys how to make, well, a certain species or how I make my patterns. I'm going to be showing you guys how I make the general shape of the head, a few tips and tricks that I like to use, and the basic process that makes my life easier as a fursuit maker. So this is going to be an interesting tutorial because I'm not saying this is how you make a fox, this is how you cut out the cheek, this is blah blah blah. No, I'm just going to be showing you the process that I use so you can apply these tips to your own fursuit making and, you know, just be a better fursuit maker and junk. Anyways, I'm sure you guys just want to see the creature that I'm going to be making in this tutorial, so... Doo -doo -doo -doo. This little, little baby thingy is called an Aster. It is essentially a corgi dragon, and it was designed by my friend Mangle Pop-Tart. Please follow her FA. They are a closed species that she sells adopts of. They're adorable. Her artwork's amazing. You know, shameless plug. <laughs> Anyways, this is what I'm going to be making in the tutorial. I'm not expecting you guys to make this head in, from the tutorial. I'm just, I just want you guys to know how I make these things and the general shape I use, because I... I don't like bucket fursuit heads. I think they look terrible. The thing that is different about the bases that I use is it starts out with a round shape automatically. You're not getting a squared off shape when you like squish everything in. It already has a very natural animalistic shape to it. And it's awesome because you can essentially take this and create just about any sort of base that you want to out of it. You can create, you know, your big, grumpy, scary dogs, or your cute little chibi cats, you know? It's, if you have no idea how to make a fursuit, this tutorial is not for you. You're going to be completely confused. Go watch a canine hybrid video, or a Tisa Brasos video, or... I actually have a playlist in my channel that has all of these amazing fursuit tutorials that taught me pretty much everything I know. So go check those out, and maybe come back here after you've made a few and, and see what I do. Let's get started! Uh, if you guys are wondering what that noise is in the background, well, uh, it's 91 degrees here in Houston, and, um, yeah, I need a fan, so sorry, deal with it. Now then, this is the basic shape that we're going to want to start with. It's just a ring, a headpiece, and some foam to fill in all the rest of it. It'll fit onto your head like this, and it's the best base to start making a fursuit with. Now, I don't have any long pieces of foam to start out with, so I'm taking this green high-density foam and I'm going to cut it into strips so they can wrap all the way around my head, create a little connector part, and go under my chin. So I cut out a super long piece that fits all the way around my head with a little bit of excess. And I'm going to let this dry because it's being glued in the middle. And I've pinned it. Make sure you don't leave your pins in your foam. That would not be fun. And now that we've got our ring all cut out and glued together, we can just pop that onto the head. You can pretty much put it on whatever way that you want. Uh, try to make it the most even around the head that you can. Um, you can keep it just above eye level or a little bit further down. Uh, don't go too far down and don't go too high up. Just keep it in a nice middle point. It's okay if it covers the eyes at this point. You're just going to cut those in later. Now what you want to do is you want to take your foam and you want to cut out a long strip that can fit from here to here. If you don't have enough foam, just glue two pieces together again. Now that we have a piece cut out, we can just boop, 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 some glue down. You can put it on this side too, it doesn't really matter. Now, the symmetry is going to be very important, which is why I'm glad I have this line running all the way through the head. And you're just going to smack this right in the middle and pin it down. Just right through the foam. If you have a styrofoam head, this actually works a lot better because the needles can go into the styrofoam head. But because I've got a glass head, I can only do it on the foam. And you can just dab down a little bit of hot glue at that crack. And remember, don't do it on the inside of the head or it's going to hurt your head, which would suck. So, now that we've got our helmet piece, you want to take a uh, long strip. I did not have quite enough, so I glued two pieces together. And just pop it on this way. 
just like a kung fu helmet or something if you guys ever took taekwondo like I did for all of two seconds. Alright, now that we have this weird helmet piece, we're going to put strips across the face, and this will take about four or five strips all going this way and this way, and glue them all together, and you're going to put eyeball shaped pieces right here. It's going to be a little tricky to get them to fit in perfectly, but just keep uh, trimming away excess and pressing them in until you get a really good solid shape. Now, just remember as you're adding more things to it, it's a little bit easier to take a two inch piece of foam, cut out the shape you need, and then cut it in half. So that way, when you stick it to stuff, you've got a perfect match to it to stick to the other side. It keeps things a little bit more symmetrical and will be really helpful with markings and uh, eyebrows and cheeks down the line. But once you get this eyeball shape cut out to put right here, uh, all you gotta do is trim, 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 all around the corner so it'll fit in there like a puzzle piece. And you'll still have to do a little bit of extra like wedging to get it in the right spots. But for the most part, this should get it pretty easily in there. And you can do it like this, or you can take the head base off of your uh, head thingy to your and, um, and glue it in there so it's a little bit easier to do. Hi there, so it's tomorrow. Yeah, so my hair's wet and I'm not wearing flattering clothing, but whatever. So I wasn't liking how the shape was turning out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push this inward and glue a really good seam all around here so I get a nice rounded dome. So basically what I'm doing is I'm pinching the seam, filling it with hot glue and needling it shut. And I'm gonna just keep doing that along this uh, weird butt crack that I've created so that I can create a more domed shape. Now this is not gonna be necessary if you did the first step right, but this is necessary for me because I didn't like how the shape was turning out. So now that the top of the head is rounded and drying, I'm going to start placing some strips along this area, thinner strips than this. Yeah, about like that. Uh, sorry I put this piece on without you guys like watching, but it's just a strip of foam that goes down the chin. So I'm just going to glue this piece in and suture it to this side of this piece and eventually it's going to become like a big face mask. And I've put just put down this strip, I've put it in place with a few pins and I'll take those pins out when it dries. Now just do this for this crack and this entire hole and you should be good. So these strips do not need to be perfectly shaped for the hole that you've made, they just need to be uh, generally the same shape and have a little bit of an indent so that they can fit in there pretty well. Uh, I've already put hot glue inside of there, just gonna cram this little triangle into this piece. Just like that. And now I'm gonna pin it into place. Now it's a good idea to count how many pins that you put in a piece and write it down. Just so you don't create any problems with sticking yourself in the eye with a pin that gets lost under a piece of foam or something. And ideally, you're going to wind up with this sort of welding mask type deal. If it doesn't fit as well as you'd like it to, you can always carve out, carve out the inside of the head a little bit with a, a razor or some scissors. I've been using this very safe tool this entire time. Not even sure where I found it. And this is the perfect canvas to start mapping out what you want to do. So first up on this head, we're going to draw a line that's perfectly symmetrical down the middle. And since I have a glass foam, this isn't foam, since I have a glass head, I can just pop my head on and follow this seam line all around the head so I know exactly where the middle is. And this will just keep things symmetrical for later on. Anyways, so this is the little fluffy thingy majigger I'm gonna be making. And um, I'm going to try to draw its facial details onto here. Okay, so I've mapped out basically the muzzle, the mouth, the nose, and the eyeball. And what I'm going to do with the eye is I'm going to cut out the general shape of it, and then I'm going to flip it and put it on this side as well. So what I did was I went in with my scissors, made a tiny little puncture hole, just shoved my scissors through that, and snip, 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 all around. And now you've got two creepy holes in your fursuit head. But these should make a pretty decent foundation for you to go off of for now.
for this part, the muzzle shape, uh, I'm going to be using a pretty decent sized chunk of foam. You can glue two pieces together, just use what you have. And I'm going to basically just be plopping it on right there after I cut out the general shape. And then you've got a pretty decent muzzle shape to just glue on there and start with. Okay, so now that the muzzle piece is as carved out as I want to make it, I'm just going to pop it right onto here and once again, pin it in place. Oh snap, have not stopped recording. Okay, so halfway through the tutorial, I started using this darker foam, and that's this is just some kind of uh, stuff that came with camping gear that my dad had. It it seems like high density foam. Uh, it really, it, there's no difference between it and the green foam. Like, foam, foam is like people. It doesn't matter if it's yellow or black or white or green or if you found it in a dumpster. It's just, yeah, it, it's good because it's foam. I went off on a really weird tangent there. So once I get the muzzle shaped out about where I want it to be, I glue on a strip of fabric to, or a strip of foam to cut off most of the way, just so I can get the silhouette looking how I want it to. As you can see, I've just glued on like a good solid chunk of foam, and uh, once it's all sturdy in there, I carve it out and create soft, rounded shapes. Now this is just my own personal style where I really like cute, soft, chibi shapes, uh, but find what works best for you. Reference your art style, reference anything that you really want, as long as it's not another fursuit maker style, and try and create the shape that you have drawn out. So in order to carve out the inside of the mouth, what you want to do is take a writing utensil that will show up on foam, trace out the inside of the mouth. I have already cut out uh, a hole in it, and then take a razor. I'm I'm using a loose razor, which you probably don't want to do, but I live on the edge because I'm edgy, so I use a razor. So, once you get a sharpie line drawn on the inside of the mouth, you want to trace around it with your cutting utensil, and once you get a good line deep down in there, you pull back the foam, and then you just cut towards the back of the mouth until the top of the mouth falls out until you get a nice top chunk out and the roof of the mouth is all open now. And as you saw in the beginning of this video, this is the finished base. Now a few things that I forgot to talk about in the video were how I attached the jaw and how I attached the ears. So what I did, these are solid foam and I drew out the shape and then I drew out the exact same shape on the other side and made sure to place the ears in symmetrical spots so that they look, you know, like ears. And the cool thing about fursuits is they don't need to be absolutely perfect because, you know, animals and human faces aren't absolutely perfect, but you do want a general amount of symmetry, which you are going to get if you cut out the cheek or cut out the eyebrow and cut it in half, which is what I did with the ears, eyebrows, cheeks, and um, uh, these little parts that I added to the jaw. How I made the jaw was, I cut out one piece of foam uh, to basically get the length of the jaw, and then I added two little pieces to the bottom and one piece, uh, two little pieces to the side and one piece to the bottom, and trimmed all around until I got the shape that I wanted. You know, this cute little dorky smile, I guess. 